Um, just a few minutes back, uh, the Tonys has said that new big projects will always experience problems. Well, that's true. But Irish Water is probably one of these big projects that shouldn't have even started. And for Minister Howland to say that uh, we'll probably look back and, and be proud of it one of these days, um, I just wonder what land he's living in. The Tarnished also expressed uh, surprise and shock and outrage at the amount of sewerage that's going into the sea and rivers. Well, it is shocking. And what I don't understand is how come you did nothing about it or so little for four years? given that you knew that it was happening. And you say 42 towns. Well, I think that's an underestimate. In Wexford alone, Artistown, Kilmore Quay, Duncormick, Curraclough, Oilgate, Ferns, Camolan, Duncannon, Wellington Bridge, Clonroach, Ballycanoe, Campile, Ballyhag are all on the list. That's 13 towns are on the list for work, for waste treatment plants. Now, Irish Water have come along. First of all, these were postponed and the council weren't allowed to do them. Now, Irish Water, do you know what they've done? They've actually taken six off the list. Kilmore, Quay, Duncormick, Curraclough, Oilgate, Ferns and Camolan have come off the list. They have a list of seven. None of them have started and we don't know when they're going to start. Now, I don't understand how ye could actually stand over the failure to act on the problems facing sewerage in Ireland. Now, I understand that money is difficult to get, but given that the Europeans have refused to give you a write-down on the bank money, which they should have, any organisation that was prepared to give you 64 billion to bail out useless banks the idea that they wouldn't give you money and allow you to borrow, you boast about being able to borrow at less than 2% and it's great that we can, but we should be allowed to borrow money at that price in order to invest in water and the treatment of it, the waste treatment. But we're not without it staying on the books, which uh, forces you into breaking other EU rules. These are people that are supposed to be helping us, not crippling us. Italy and France have just admitted that they're not going to meet the rules this year, next year, or the year after, or the year after. They're going to break the rules and they're going to get away with it. They do what they like and we do what we're told. We should be borrowing money at the, the less than 2% rate in order to tackle the infrastructure uh, relation to water and sewerage right now. Now, Taoiseach, you mentioned Rings End and you boasted that Irish Water are going to save 170 million. Yes, and you know how they're going to do it? They're going to scrap the long sea outfall. Now, up to now, this wasn't allowed to be scrapped because it meant that the, dis the discharge was going to be right where it is at the moment and the extra discharge was going to cause the problems for the communities around. I'd like to see what the local communities are going to have to say about the fact that there's an extra risk along that coastline because of the fact that the long sea outfall is going to be abandoned by Irish Water in order to save money. Now, Minister Kelly, you said today that the, the installation of the water meters should go ahead because without the water meters we can't tell where the leaks are. I can tell you, I worked on the streets of this city for 20 years and I can tell you that is not true. But the, the majority of your problem is actually in Dublin with regard to wastewater. Dublin is the biggest problem of all. You won't be looking for individual... You, you, Dublin is far, far worse. D D Dublin, you will not be looking for individual leaks. What you're going to be looking at is, you're going to be looking at the cast iron pipes that are corroded. They've actually got a bore, the four inch pipes have got a bore of two inches left. The rest is corrosion built up around it, right? You won't be fixing leaks here and there, you'll be replacing the pipes. So it's not a case of going around looking for leaks. You don't need meters to know where those pipes are. We know where they are. They were, they were leaking ten years ago 
and they're leaking worse now, and we know where they are, and like the government before you, you've done nothing about fixing them to date. You've done nothing about it. It's madness. Now, just the guard, the guardie. We've been contacted by concerned superintendents who have said that it was it's been unfair for the manner in which the guardie have actually been sent out in a lot of cases uh, to do these, these protests. They could not get overtime for the last couple of years to look after their normal work. But the water charges come along and they get any amount of people to work on these uh, protests. They are actually unhappy with it because it does nothing for their relationship with the community. Secondly, this is tied to the politicization of our Garda Shikana. It's a, there's a direct link. And it, 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 it reminds me of, and I mentioned it yesterday, Taoiseach, but the, the, the selection of the new chair for the police and authority is not an independent selection. And the manner in which the selection process took place leaves a lot to be desired. And if we're not going to get an independent police authority, we'd be better without the police authority. You're about to pick a new Garda Commissioner. So Deputy, you're going to uh, on a different issue altogether. And if, if, given the, the, the latest Garda Inspector report, if you continue and go ahead and pick someone from the existing hierarchy and continue with your politicisation of the Garda Shikharan in Ireland, nothing is going to change in how our policing is done. The Garda Commissioner might be gone, Minister Shatter might be gone, but nothing else has changed and you are... You are not showing any appetite for real reform with the Garda Chicago. Thank you, Deputy.